Gardening doesn't have to be hard or even expensive, especially if you have the right tools. So I'm going to share some of our secrets here at the Green Desert to help make your garden more successful without spending a lot of money. Your garden can't grow without water. Now how you water makes a huge difference. Underground irrigation is a great place to start. It helps to curb evaporation, plus it puts water at the roots of your plants, which is where it's needed. So let's talk about a few ways to do it. Some people run lines underground. We use Oyas because we found them to be easy and very effective. Oyas are clay pots that we put in the middle of our garden beds. Now you can see how after just a few hours water seeps out of the pots. It's great because the plants take exactly how much water they need. Now as for the water you use, rainwater is best. Ever notice how much plants flourish after a good rain? Well we put gutters around our home and store the water in water totes. We actually have it hooked up to our Oyas so the plants are getting rainwater consistently. Now with the hot summers and little rain we get in Arizona, it's really not feasible to use rainwater all of the time, but you still want to make sure your plants are getting the best water. So you want to filter your water to take out the fluoride and chloride. Fluoride and chloride actually kills the beneficial bacteria and the microbes in the soil. Now you can use a whole house filter, which is really one of your more expensive routes. A simple and cheaper way is to use an inline filter, which would go on your water source. You have to do research to see which type of inline filter works best for you. One of the things good about rain is that it's filled with dissolved oxygen, something that actually helps the plants grow. Now this is not to be confused with the oxygen in the water molecule. Now, there are several ways to add dissolved oxygen to your water. We use a device called Pure Rain, but there are lots of other options on the market. A huge annoyance for us is grass. It's bad for the plants because the grass fights them for nutrients. Now if you don't intervene, the grass usually wins and you may end up getting more grass than food. Now one way to stop the problem before it starts is to block the grass. We put layers of cardboard under our garden beds. Pavers will also do the job. There are lots of types of fertilizers out there. Plants need it to survive because it provides nutrients to the plants. My advice, go organic. Along with the fertilizer from our chickens, we get fertilizer from our aquaponic system, which is pretty much just fish waste. We also use worm tea and we fertilize our plants twice per month. Healthy soil is another thing crucial to a successful garden. You want to make sure you have chunky soil so that oxygen can get in. It also makes it easy for worms and bugs to live. You can have the right soil, water, and fertilizer and grow gorgeous plants but still not get any food. The culprit is sometimes not enough bees to pollinate. So we built a pollination block to attract pollinators. Now don't worry, these are mason bees. They are not interested in stinging. Summer heat is miserable for us here in the southwest so it has to be hard on the plants. Shade cloth is a simple solution. It gives the plants relief, but also leaves room for the bees to get in and pollinate. So, there you have it. Simple things you can do that don't cost a lot of cash. If you have other ways to garden on a dime, please share. Email me at greendesert.org.